about Vivekananda when he came to his home in 1892 or 1890, I don't remember. And he was a young boy of 10 or 12 years old. His father had called Vivekananda when he came from Calcutta by walk to Trivandrum. Rama Swamaya is his name. He was 12 years old. And he writes that Swamiji told him four words whatever is the essence of all scriptures, Abhaya, Ahimsa, Asanga, and Ananda. Abhaya is fearlessness, Ahimsa is non-violence, Asanga is non-attachment, and Ananda. And this little boy didn't know what to say, and by the time he was 40 or something, he was jumping in joy that he got this kind of advice. So, you don't know when is that advice going to fructify. It's a seed at that time, and it is it grows a big banyan tree. <clears throat> so, it was really interesting when I read that. So somebody sent me that. So, it was really interesting. Beautiful, yes. And I think we get all these four things when we are attached to the self. When we abide in the self, this fearlessness comes, this bliss comes, and uh, we are not interested in things outside where our get dispassion comes because you have found everything up here, you know. So, that is very beautiful. Actually, I wanted to read something today. Um, this was a talk between uh, Bhagwan and uh, Anna Malai Swami. Mm. So this happened, uh, it doesn't say what date it happened, but I think it happened sometime in late 1930s. So uh, someone asked this question to Bhagwan, what is satsang? Bhagavan replies, Satsang means only Atma Sang, association with the Self. Only those who cannot practice that are to practice being in the company of realized beings or sadhus. That means Satsang doesn't mean that we have to be with people. We can be alone and we can be in satsang. But if we can't practice satsang alone, then a company of realized beings or sadhus or people on, on this path is satsang. And then someone asked, when does one get the company of sadhus? When do you get a company like this where you can be with people like this? And Bhagwan says, the opportunity to be in the company of a Sadguru comes effortlessly to those who have performed worship of God, Japa, Tapas, pilgrimages for long periods in their previous births. There is a verse by Tayu Manuvar which points out the same thing. O Lord of the first and last those who properly start the worship of idols, holy places and sacred waters will meet the Sadguru who will tell them the words of truth. So it's not that when we are into this, it is by chance. It looks like everything is by chance, but it's not like that. Everyone might have done or has recently done some sort of work on themselves to come to satsang. Only he 
who has done plenty of nishkamme karma nishkamme karma is action performed without any thought of reward from it or consequences of it not looking for the fruits of their action in previous births will get abundant faith in the guru having faith in the guru's words such a man will follow the path because you will not going to follow a path half heartedly this is a full hearted path when you think yes this is the way i have to be free and and you follow the words of a guru then the path and then you will reach the goal of liberation then the next question arised in the devotee's mind was we are living in a place where there is no sadhu so maybe someone who might be westerner what can we do we cannot have the darshan of sadhu every day and bhagwan said what to do pictures name of gods pujas have been performed for this purpose only those who have attained the grace of ishvara will get the grace of the guru only through the grace of the guru can one attain the grace of the self which is within that alone is moksha or liberation on another occasion bhagwan explained the importance and the greatness of satsang by quoting from the suta samhita those who are seen by the eyes of jivan muktas those who are liberated while they are still alive are known as jivan muktas are freed from many kind of sins and become themselves jivan muktas so what bhagwan is saying just seen by the eyes of jivan muktas only seen by the eyes so just a company just staying there just be there can make you free from sins and can make you become themselves jivan muktas the family of the jivan mukta is also purified his mother herself is a person who has done what needs to be done the whole earth is purified by him after saying that there were many other passages in the suta samhita which glorified gyanis bhagwan went on to say when a gyani is born in this world the devotees the disciples those who are indifferent to god and even sinners are all benefited the life histories of many people exemplify this since bhagwan was so frequently extolling the greatness of satsang and grace i once asked him so now annamalai swami is saying that he once asked him it is said that moksha is attained easily only with the grace of the guru how is that so bhagwan replied the house of moksha is not anywhere outside it is within everyone whoever has a strong desire to attain moksha is being pulled by the guru who is within that is our pure self the guru who is on the outside raises his hand and pushes him inward this is how the guru's grace operates so pull within and the push from outside and both makes our journey easier and faster bhagwan then quoted two of his favorite verses from kevalya navneetam in which the disciple thanks the guru for giving him the grace which enabled him to realize the self lord you are the reality remaining as my inmost self ruling me during all my countless incarnations glory to you who have put on an external form in order to instruct me I do not see how I can repay your grace for having liberated me glory glory to your holy feet the master the master, the master, the master. beamed on him as he spoke drew him near him and said very lovingly 
to say stay fixed in the self without the three kinds of obstacles ignorance doubt and knowledge derived from false premises obstructing your experience is the highest return you can render me so this is what bhagwan spoke about satsang and so satsang is not a talk and whatever talk arises in satsang is also to help us to abide in the self to the eternal pure self which is exactly same as the guru exactly same as the god no difference nothing but silence silence within deep silence silence in complete emptiness it's effortless no action is needed to be in silence this is our true nature to be in silence and the peace which follows abiding in self is because of silence no chattering mind 
no ego, no effect of bodily afflictions on us. We stay as a witness all the time. Uninvolved, not judging. Pure presence, actions are happening with the body-mind, we are mere observers. always abiding in the Self. Satsang happening all the time. Sat means truth. Self is truth. Sang is company. Truth has never left us. We are this truth, eternal truth. Conviction and faith in these words can bring you back home to the truth. Nothing else needs to be done. If something you have forgotten and someone reminds you what else needs to be done to find that thing? It's as easy and as simple as that. Self has never moved away from us. How can it move away? We are it. We are always the Self.
our identification with the mind and always looking outside we could not remember the self I heard a beautiful story long time back. There was this old lady who was a realized soul living in a small hut. Few people came to understand what is self from her. when they came she was inside and then she opened the door and started looking something she told that she was doing some sewing and her needle has dropped so she has to look for it and these all people also started looking with her they kept looking for a while they couldn't find it one of the persons asked this old lady where have you dropped this needle she said inside the hut they were really shocked and surprised if you have dropped inside the hut then why you are looking outside she said cause there is more light outside there is no light inside inside is dark i can't see inside and so someone suggested why then do you don't have a lamp make some light inside and see inside where it is she said exactly that's what you all have to do look within with the light of knowledge and you will find it but what we do whole day each of us should be honest see how you spend your whole day looking outside no action can bring you back to the self no action whatever you do good or bad karmas can never get you here nothing from the material world can get you there but because we have eyes ears senses job family all the time we are looking outside we can still look outside and we can find within if our interest is within if our interest is within if our interest in outside things you can keep searching for millions of years you will not find it if our love our attachment our desires are in the external objects whatever we do whatever number of scriptures we read satsangs we attend whatever we do we can never find it 
But if our interest is to find our own self, pure self, our longing, our intense desire is to know the self. It is always there. Sit quietly. Don't bother what is happening around us. If you think there is something really urgent you have to finish, do it. And then come back and sit and look within. When there is no desire, when all your attention is on the pure awareness, awareness shows you your true self. Our purpose of life is to know our own self. Know this truth and look within. We are the substratum. We are the screen on which everything is manifesting. To know this, don't be a thing which is manifesting. Be the self. Give away this notion of that you are a body-mind complex. There is only one false notion by which all this drama has unfolded in front of us and we are suffering, we are miserable and that is we think we are this body. And the whole world thinks we are this body. No one shakes us, tells us, look, this is a mistake. You are not the body. You are living in the body and you have to leave soon. But if you don't remember that you are not the body, then you will be dead soon. Understand this. What you believe, you become that. If you believe you are the body, death is certain. If you are attached to the body, you have to die. This is the curse. This is the first and only sin to think that you are the body. I am not talking about from any book. I have never read this thing, but I am telling you the truth. 
If you think you are this body, you have to die. But if you abide in self, you are eternal. You are purest of the pure. You were never involved in anything wrong or good or bad. You were always a witness. Tell me what can you give yourself credit or discredit when you were born? When you were three months old, six months old, one year old, can you say that you did bad stuff at that time? As a two years old, if you killed someone, would you be punished? Why can't you live like that now? Now you have to have trust and faith in God to live like this. How stupid idiot this idea is. Without any concepts. People fed you, they dressed you up and now when you are an adult, you are so scared. You need insurance, you need job protection, you need so many things. When you were born, God this absolute power sent people to help you, your parents. You were well fed, kept comfortable. Somewhere in this journey, This I thought came and destroyed our peace. Jesus says beautifully that people who are like child will enter the kingdom of God. What is this kingdom of God? When we abide in our self, we are God. We are in kingdom of God. We can never reach there with ego. Ego is nothing but this false notion that we are this body. Until we have this notion that I am the body, suffering will continue. Until we have this notion that I am the body, we'll keep getting bodies after bodies. And there is no end to it. Don't look around. Don't compare yourself with others. There are no others. It is your own dream. Don't compare the notes with others. 
that if people are behaving in a way nobody is bothered about self, then how does it matter? That means the whole word is the same. Remember the word what you see is created by your own mind. You have to be free, not others. And when you are free, you will know there are no others. When we see this world is true, it's because we are in the grip of Maya, illusion, so much entrenched in it that we don't know there is anything outside it. Like a frog in the well, we don't know there is a universe outside it. Outside is complete freedom. Look within. Find yourself. Give up all activities in your mind. Let the body keep doing what activities it has to do. Exactly like when you were a child. You were sleeping, waking up, drinking milk from your mother's breast. You had no clue about doership, about I thought, about ego. Come back to that perfect bliss. Nothing should bother you. In reality, you have not done anything right or wrong. You are still the same innocent child. All the actions are done by the body. According to its destiny, you don't get involved, no doership. Stay as the pure self all the time. Stay in satsang all the time. No situation in your life can make you move from this satsang. You can always be an observer. Witness to whatever is happening. Like in a lucid dream, the dream is going on and now you are aware that it is a dream. Nothing in the dream now can affect you. Stay like that.
just be an observer to stay like that surrender yourself to the pull of the self and get the push of the guru so there is no attraction of the world around you no influence of the dream around you and once you abide in the truth you abide in your own bliss you have not created this silence you are this silence You are this pure formless awareness. All pervading awareness. Substrate of everything. Abide in your silence. Go deeper and deeper in your own silence. So the pull of the mind leaves you completely. You stay as pure awareness. mind and body belongs to the matter to the world not to you
when mind and body is not yours, you have no ownership of it. You are only visiting. You are only a guest in this body mind. So how can you have pride of this body mind? I am the body's completely wrong notion. Even body's mind is completely wrong. I am not the body. Body is not mine. You are residing in the body's also partial truth. From Brahman, when he realized para Brahman, you are all pervading awareness. You are not only residing in this body, you are in finite awareness. Always be the self-conscious and never be the body-conscious. You are the life. Self is the sentient being. Self is the light, self effulgent. Standing on its own support, giving support to everything in this world. The moment self leaves from the body, body becomes useless. You are that self. You are nothing but self. Practice to be an observer in solitude and take the same observer during action.
Only pay attention to the pure witness and then be the witness all the time. You are the ocean of silence. Don't behave like a wave. You are never a doer. You are always uninvolved. And stay like that all the time. Always be the observer of all actions. Always stay equanimous. Always stay in your own bliss. Not going through the cycles of joy and sorrow. No guilt. You have never done anything wrong. You were always the pure witness. Now realized, stay like that. This is a natural state.
टेन सत्संगो बताए इन कंपनी ऑफ योर ट्रू सेल्फ एंड गो डीपर एंड डीपर इन योर ओन सेल्फ Enjoy your own bliss, staying detached from everything, but attached to the self, pure self. Om Shanti Shanti.